So uh, the problem we uh, were interested in, in the, is how to achieve high packet rates, which are a problem even on uh, bare metal, even if we, we are talking about uh, uh, virtual machines here. To achieve high packet rates in uh, current system, people have resorted to bypass solutions. Either to bypass the entire operating system, like Intel DPDK or PF Ring DNA, or in the NetMap case, <coughs> to bypass only the network stack. Why this is done? Because uh, uh, high packet rates are typically needed in uh, uh, applications which need uh, direct access to packets coming on the network and uh, typically don't need all the processing done, done by, the, by the network stack. And uh, at the same time, they, to achieve high packet rates, they need to um, have a small per packet over it, per packet work. So bypassing uh, is uh, the solution that is currently uh, used. Uh, in virtual machines, network, fun network function virtualization tries to move uh, uh, middle boxes, uh, net, uh, firewalls, and so on inside virtual machines. Virtual machines are usually connected uh, with each other with uh, software switches. In our group, we developed a fast uh, software switch which is developed, uh, which is based on the NetMap API, which is called Vale, which achieves uh, uh, for short packets uh, a, a throughput of uh, four eight million packets per second between two virtual machines, which is good, but is still uh, far from what the same switch can do between. Uh, uh, applications running on uh, the host, which is uh, 20 million packets per second. It's a software switch, so it's limited only by the memory bandwidth. Then there is hardware pass-through, passing a uh, device, giving, uh, giving a virtual machine uh, direct access to a real device. Uh, of course, you need uh, real hardware to do this, and you are limited by the communication which has to go to uh, the PCIe bus. And then there are virtual pass-through solutions, which are, which are different from ours. One, our solution is uh, in competition with this. Uh, they typically rely on busy weight because another problem with virtual machines and also uh, with high packet trace on bare metal is uh, notification, the, the time uh, involved in the processing of uh, notifications, which in virtual machines also involve typically expensive virtual machine exits and re-enters. So uh, what we propose here is uh, a pass-through of NetMap. Okay, so uh, it is a solution to, which is specific to NetMap. What we are doing here is to give uh, NetMap applications, uh, applications that already use the NetMap API to access the network, a, a direct access from a guest to the host. So it's not a generic solution for, for example, application based on sockets. Okay? It's only for applications that already use the NetMap API. And it can achieve high speeds. The idea is to have uh, these uh, applications running inside the guest behave uh, as much as possible like application running directly on the host. And so uh, obtain this, uh, almost the same numbers that can be obtained on NetMap on the host. So line rate for physical uh, adapters, 20 million packets per second for ballet ports, and uh, uh, Strange numbers for NetMap pipe. NetMap pipes only uh, exchange packets uh, and don't, don't act, never touch the, uh, the buffers that are exchanged. So they can be very fast. But of course, uh, as, soon as, as soon as the application starts doing real things on the packs, those numbers drops dramatically.
with build plus two, we uh, we can obtain the uh, the same. Uh, we can uh, try to keep the advantages of NetMap, which is uh, hardware independent, is a software solution, which is. Uh, uh, talks to hardware, but in the way operating system do that, by providing an abstraction which isolates the, uh, the application from the real hardware. At the same time, using commodity hardware, so you don't need, uh, for, uh, for example, for uh, uh, hardware pass-through, it's only feasible if you have uh, a, an adapter which al already has, uh, for example, single-rooted IO2, have several uh, hardware virtual devices uh, so that you can give one to each uh, virtual machine. And uh, avoid busy polling because uh, this doesn't play well for a general purpose uh, API, which should run in uh, a general purpose operating system, which is maybe is doing other things. Using the uh, the things that NetMap already does, we can, uh, and exporting the uh, communication paths of NetMap to virtual machines, we can achieve uh, a virtual pass through for hardware ports by passing a NetMap port that talks to an hardware to a virtual machine. If we export uh, Vale ports, uh, Vale ports works by memory copy, and so we have uh, isolation between virtual machines. So we can have uh, untrusted virtual machines talk to each other. If we export NetMap pipes, NetMap pipes use a shared memory to exchange communication. They don't copy packets, they just swap pointers. And therefore we can have uh, communication <coughs> between uh, uh, trusted virtual machines. The important point is all of, all of these uh, cases all use the same API. So the decision of uh, whether you trust the virtual machine or not does not depend. You, you don't have to change the application running in the virtual machine. OK, this is the previous work. Uh, some quick uh, reminder of now NetMap works, uh, there is a shared memory area which is shared between, this is NetMap running on the host. This is a shared memory area where uh, applications uh, uh, can talk with the kernel. The shared memory area contains <coughs> an abstract version which of the queues of the hardware adapters and the buffers which contain the packets which have uh, received and transmitted from the adapter. A set of pointers uh, define the part of the queue which is owned by the applications and the part of the queue which is owned by the kernel. Add points to the first uh, ring slot, the first queue slot, which is owned by the application, by the user. Tail to the first slot which is owned by the kernel. The netmap, in the NetMap APIs, uh, you move freely the add pointer, but the kernel doesn't look at the add pointer while you're moving it. It only looks at that when you issue, issue one of the NetMap API primitives, which is, uh, which is either an IO control or a standard poll or select system call. When you move the head pointer, and for example, this is a transmit queue, you are saying that uh, uh, some other buffers now must belong to the kernel. In a transmit queue, this means that there are new packets to send. In a receive queue, this means that uh, you have finished working with the, uh, this set of packets, and the, the uh, corresponding buffers are available for the, the uh, uh, can be used to receive more packets. Uh, at the same time, the kernel updates the tail queue. By moving forward the tail queue, 
it gives other buffers to user space. In a transmit queue, this means that those buffers have been sent. Uh, transmission is, com is completed. In a receive queue, it means that new packets have been received. So this is essentially the NetMap APIs. The advantages of the API is you can have batching because you can move the uh, add pointer by more than one slot, by as many slots as you want. So in one system call, you can send several packets. There is no packet copy because the memory is shared. And uh, many of the overheads involved in uh, packet processing are removed. For example, memory allocation is done at the beginning, at the start of the application. So the per packet overhead is very small, and this is what enables NetMap to achieve a line rate uh, on uh, 10 gigabit SNICs or even uh, 36 million packets in transmission on 40 gigabit SNICs. Using this API, we, what it, the, we can uh, do several other things. So the, the standard thing is talking with the real NIC. But using the same API, we can have, through the valid switch, have several application talk between them. This works by copying packets to achieve separation between the applications. And uh, while uh, the shared memory area used by the, the hardware NICs is uh, always the same, there is a one system-wide area for all the uh, hardware NICs, uh, mostly for legacy reasons, however. Each valley port has its own my private, my private memory area. Uh, pipes, instead, are another va uh, variation in which only talk to each other. The two endpoints of a pipe uh, use the same memory. And pipes are a bit more flexible on the memory they use because they use the memory uh, of another adapter that you have to specify. So this is one hardware adapter or a valet port. And this is a way to use the global memory or the, a, a private memory for a pipe. OK, this is, for, uh, this is NetMap. This is what we did when we added support for the uh, NetMap and Valley Switch, which is, in, in, which is all the same because the API is the same, in uh, QEMO, essentially. The architecture of Squimo is uh, as follows. The guest, as far as uh, networking is concerned, the guest uh, sees uh, an emulated hardware adapter, which has its own queues and buffers, which are interpreted by a part of Squimo, which they call the uh, front end. The front end interprets the, the, the structure, the data structures of uh, which are shared in memory with the, the guest. For example, uh, they may be the, the one of the E1000 adapter or maybe the um, completely new, uh, uh, completely new format or VirtIO and so on. Whenever there is a new packet, the uh, front end sends it using this function call to the backend, which talks to the, um, to the host, for a, typically with a, a tap uh, device. And uh, there we added uh, another kind of backend, which is a NetMap backend, which talks to NetMap. Uh, with this architecture, <coughs> which is uh, the one which is current, currently in, 
in the upstream QEMO, we were able to achieve um, maybe between two uh, guests, three, sometimes four and five million packets per second with short packets. But with the many other optimi optimizations which are not in the uh, upstream uh, implementation. So the, the upstream implementation maybe can do uh, two or three million packets per second, <coughs> or even less. There are many problems with this uh, architecture, mainly the fact that the batching uh, is not possible here, even if it is possible in uh, the interface between uh, uh, the guest and the mm, front end and between uh, the back end and NetMap. And several packet po copies are generally involved. We try to uh, uh, avoid some of these copies, but we had difficulties uh, again because of this interface because it's not very easy to uh, keep track of the ownership of the buffers if you're not copying them through that interface. Moreover, each packet, the information regarding each packet, which is uh, the, the slot which describes the packet, has to go through two translations which are essentially useless especially if you are using NetMap in the guest, the situation is this. An application opens a device in the guest, talks with the kernel in the guest, which is completely unaware of the fact that in the host there is another instance of NetMap already opened, where, which is the final destination of the packets it, it wants to send. So uh, you put a packet in uh, the NetMap uh, ring in the guest, talking, for example, to E1000 emulated device. When you send the packets, the information has to be converted uh, to the format expected by the E1000 ring descriptors, interpreted by the front end, then again in the format expected by NetMap in the back end. In the process, packets may also, the, the content of the packets may also need to be copied. So this is one source of overhead which is paid for every packet. And at high packet rates, it ca e even if uh, it, it doesn't seem so complex, but e at high packet rates, it can become significant. So what, this is what we have done now. We have uh, essentially removed the front end and back end from the data path so that the application can directly access the, when the application is a NetMap application which opens in NetMap mode a, a, a device in the guest, it can, and the back end is NetMap, it can talk directly to NetMap. At the same time, uh, we also uh, consider that the other source of inefficiency in uh, virtual machines, which is the notification path. We want the notification path. We don't want to do busy wait for because this is one of the uh, strength of NetMap. But notification in virtual machines are very expensive, and so we adopted uh, uh, some of the, so the, the essentially the same solution which is already adopted by by Virtaio, which I will I will I'm going to it later. So <coughs> this is the situation now when an application opens a, a device in NetMap mode in the guest. The queue descriptors and the buffers are shared between the application in the guest and the host. The guest device driver is completely removed from the path. 
is not used anymore. The guest device driver is only used to set up the, uh, the data path. Then it's no longer used. And the same goes for the front end and the back end. A finer point, however, is that uh, the ring pointers are interpreted by the guest, the, the netmap, which is running in the guest. Uh, the reason for this I is uh, that, as I said before, we want to preserve netmap semantics. Netmap semantics are simple for uh, the management of these uh, information because they behave like uh, any system call parameters. The kernel only look at these parameters when you call the system call. Doesn't look at them while you're doing other things. If it looks at them while you're doing other things, you have to be careful in managing them in the order and in uh, putting memory barriers in them, uh, which is generally very hard to do. In NetMap, you write them, the kernel no doesn't look at them, then you issue a system call, the kernel looks at them and synchronizes his view with the user space view. We want to preserve this. Now the only part uh, here that can reliably do this is the kernel in the guest because it is uh, synchronous with the, with the application. So it is the kernel in the guest which sees these uh, uh, pointers and updates them. This also means that the, the information must be passed in some other way to the actual user of the information which is in, in the host. <clears throat> okay, this is a bit uh, of detail on um, how we implemented it. I think I can skip this. And this is a bit more in detail uh, how the, the whole architecture <coughs> is organized. There are essentially two parts. The most, the, the most complex part is also the one that is not important for performance because it holds, it's all resolved during the setup. And this is the, this part. During the setup, uh, a fake allocator running in the guest uh, maps the directly the host memory in the guest. And a set of callbacks are established so that an adapter is created that can talk to a fake driver in the guest. During the data path, the uh, fake driver in the guest, the adapter, and the real driver in the host play the role of the uh, original driver in the standard netmap architecture, which is one of those port drivers in the, in the other picture. The information between, uh, uh, the information of the pointers on the queue is uh, exchanged by the guest kernel and the host kernel and using a separate piece of memory which is not accessible to the application. And this, this is done asynchronously, asynchronously. This is possible because uh, this information is only relative to the part of uh, ring which is owned by the kernel by the rules of the NetMap APIs. And it can be done efficiently by using a virtual-like interaction between the PT port driver in the guest and the adapter running in the host. They can look at this shared memory, uh, write them their, their state if they are running or not, and the other party can use this information to avoid notifying the other one, the peer, if it is already running. This is essentially what Virtaio does.
This requires a thread in uh, the uh, in the host. This, the, the, the simplest thing is to have a thread, which is uh, started in the usual way when uh, when the thread is not running uh, and an update uh, is detected on the queue. The thread is started by using the usual path uh, BM exit uh, and uh, uh, which uh, translates in a start of the, of the thread. But if the thread is running, it writes in the shared memory CSB page that it is running. And as long as it has something to do, the other party doesn't need to notify it. This is very important because the, 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 the greatest cost in the notification is exciting from the, from the uh, virtual machine mode in the guest. And the same goes in the other way, because uh, in delivering interrupts inside the virtual machine may be very costly, if, especially if you don't have uh, posted interrupts. So this is how the, the virtual elect iteration works. The, each party is uh, essentially a thread, a real kernel thread in uh, the host, and uh, an interrupt thread or a software IRQ in, uh, in the guest. The IRQ in the guest. They are typically sleeping, when they get a notification, they go in the running state. When they are in the running state, they say they don't need to be kicked again. In, uh, as long as they have work, they remain in the running state. When there is no work, they return to sleep. This interaction looks simple, but is, uh, in, in, it's very tricky, really, because uh, we are uh, creating uh, uh, a feedback between how much work, how much the, the, uh, the working thread has to do, and the polling uh, rate. And this creates uh, several uh, counterintuitive uh, behaviors. Uh, for example, a faster, if the uh, working thread is faster, this may cause a great drop in the, the performance because uh, it goes to sleep much more often and it has to be notified much more often and notifications are expensive for the other thread. On the other hand, uh, delays in waking up can be useful because uh, it uh, when the party wakes up, the other, uh, the, 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 the sending party, for example, at the, the time to create larger, larger batches. And many things like that. So it's rather, it's really rather tricky. Okay, so I think I can go to the, to the measurement. This is what uh, we have measured, the performance between uh, guest and host, host and guest, and guest to guest, and host to host as a reference. Because now all these applications are using the same uh, API, and we want to have the uh, guest applications behave like uh, the, the host one, the one running directly on the host. Uh, the tool we use uh, is a uh, package gem from the netmap uh, from the netmap uh, suite which uh, just uh, sends packets without actually touching them so memory considerations and cache misses are not uh, and tlb misses are not uh, are not uh, involved 
Then we can uh, have a physical port in pass through to the guest, either for transmission of or, or uh, uh, or receive. <coughs> okay, so for a physical port, uh, we essentially achieve uh, line rate, even for short uh, batches, uh, in both in transmission and uh, and on the receive part. This is uh, expected because essentially now the guest application is uh, uh, almost indistinguishable from uh, a native netmap application which already achieves line rate. For Vale ports, we have a, a bit of a, of a surprise at first because uh, applications running in the guest are actually faster, even much faster. The, 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 the corresponding application running directly on the host are the, the lower part of the graph. But uh, this is explained as follows because uh, we have added another thread in, uh, in the system which is the one which is actually doing the real, uh, the real work. <coughs> In an application running on uh, the host using a valid port, the actual copy is done by the thread that issues the netmap call. You issue an IO control, you issue a poll, the thread copies the data. In this setup, uh, the application is running in the guest and just notifies the other thread running in the host, which then does the actual copy on the port. Moreover, if the uh, virtual like interaction is working well, notification uh, doesn't cost anything. So that thread is very fast. It's not the bottleneck. The bottleneck is simply the, this thread, which is faster than uh, the equivalent uh, situation in the host because it is a kernel thread. It doesn't have to issue system calls. Anyway, apart from this thread, which we could add even to the host, the, the result is good because the application can reach the uh, more than 20 million packets per second that Vale supports. This is for larger, larger frames, essentially the same thing. This is for uh, pipes. Again, <coughs> the uh, application running in the host are faster, in the guest are faster. This time even much faster, this, the green. Uh, the green line is for package gen running in the guest, while the purple line, uh, no, the blue line, uh, oh, okay, the, the red line is the one on the host. <coughs> for pipes, transmission, is uh, very simple, you issue the call, and then uh, the packets you have sent, you want to send, are swapped with the free slots found in uh, the receiving end of the pipe. So it's just a swap of uh, uh, pointers in the, in the rings. The guest is faster again because uh, there is this additional thread. That's the reason. Anyway, you can see that there is uh, a very big drop of performance when the batch size, uh, the batch size is the number of packets the package gen sends for each call, uh, 
uh, goes beyond a certain threshold. This is one of the things that happen because the, the actual interaction in notifications between uh, mm, two threads that work in a, like Virtaio is actually very tricky. And this is one of the situations where something tricky happens. Here, we can also see how the, the system behaves when uh, we change uh, the Q sides for different Q sizes. In, uh, for, uh, for, slow, for uh, small batch sizes, Package gen running in the guest is the bottleneck. Essentially, for the cost of running, of executing the, the system call. Essentially, for the system call. Not for the notification, because the uh, thread that has to actually do the work is kept running by by, uh, by our virtual-like interaction. And so we can achieve high packet rates. But when the batch size increases, this adds no additional cost for packet gen running in the guest, because it's essentially always doing the same thing, because it doesn't touch the packets. So it's just a number that it writes in the add pointer. It writes a bigger number. It, do it doesn't have to do anything more than that. But more work is added to the thread that actually has to swap the packets. At some point, those thre that thread becomes the bottleneck. When that thread becomes the bottleneck, packaging in the guest becomes faster and eventually fills the queue, Fill fills up the queue. When the queue is filled, it has to be notified. Notification is a cost for the one that sends the notification. So. Uh, that the thread that is, is the bottleneck is slowed down by the fact that it has to wake up the uh, package gen running in the guest. And so it has to wake up more and more until in the end it wakes up once for every batch. That's, uh, that's the uh, limiting point. And if you increase the sides of the, of the queue, you obtain the same behavior, limiting at higher values of throughput, because for each batch you are sending more packets. OK, so uh, also latency is important. Uh, of course, latency is very different if uh, the receiving party is already running or not. We think, however, that the numbers are reasonable. If you have to do all the notification, the other party is sleeping and you have to, have to wake him up, we can obtain, for example, in the worst case, between two guests, uh, 55, uh, 25 microseconds. If the other party is already running, we can obtain much smaller, much smaller times. Okay, in the final test we did, we tried to connect several virtual machines, each running a netmap bridge, always from the netmap suite, connected by netmap pies, but performing copies uh, for technical reasons. So even if they are using netmap pipes, they are actually copying packets from, uh, from one machine from an, to another. We compare these with, again, uh, the same uh, uh, applications running directly on the host. Uh, of course, there is uh, a performance drop, but it is 15% 15, 15 of, the, of the original which we think it is, should be acceptable. Of course, there is a drop because there are copies. Okay? We have yet to perform the test with uh, a, a full zero copy path.
Okay, so this is the conclusion. Uh, what, uh, what we have uh, implemented of all these? Uh, of course, we have to modify several things to implement this. We have to modify NetMap both as a guest and as a host. We have to modify the hypervisor and the guest, the guest kernel. Okay, uh, the hypervisor we uh, found it easy because we had already experienced, so we have modified Quimo. But there is work uh, supported by a Google Summer of Code granted to uh, modify also Beehive. We have already modified, uh, as a guest, both Linux and FreeBSD. Um, all the code is available in uh, at that GitHub address. Stefano Garzarella is the guy that actually did mu much of the actual coding. <laughs> okay. As a student at the University of Pisa. <coughs> okay. Thank you. I'm done. Questions? Okay. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually have one question regarding like the, um, the, the wake up logic that you in there, had in there. I think it's really interesting because um, back in 2008, I was working on the FreeBSD speed dry layer, and it's also sort of, you know, a five tool in some way, right? You know, wake up and boom, wake wake up. And what I noticed is that. Um, the old people I built there as well, there's sort of this funny logic in it that if the buffer is full and the other side gets the first data out of it, you don't already wake up the sending side. Because the problem is that if it only gets one byte out, you just wake up the other process, write one byte back in, and it's, it's really annoying. So what happens is there's this logic in there that it only sends the wake up to the other side if actually, say, half of the buffer has become empty. Yeah, yeah, that's one of several uh, um, several uh, tricks that can be done to improve the situation, yeah. but there are s many more others. We are we're actually studying, we have been studying this for a long time. That it, we are trying to create a more complete control of the situation. And uh, there are many, many possibilities. Uh, uh, this is one, for example, is implemented already in uh, Virtaio. Oh, yeah. But it's only possible in. Um, one direction, not in the other. Because in there's one direction where you know that there are already packets. And then there is the other direction where you don't know if the other packets are coming. So you cannot delay the notification as much as you want. Yeah. Unless you try to uh, create a, 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 a balance between uh, latency and, uh, and throughput. But this is a political decision. Okay. Oh, which one are you referring to? Sorry. Uh, if you go up into the throughput curve uh, up to the NFS, that's TH and RH. There is a description. No, but uh, uh, this kind of uh, control is not implemented here. The only control that is here is that keeping the uh, running thread uh, wake, wake up, uh, keeping it alive for a bit longer, even if it observes that there is no. Um, no traffic, it doesn't immediately go to sleep. It waits for a bit, which is a parameter, which has to be tuned and so on. No, uh, the fact that the uh, RX is, uh, is uh, lower here, I think, is uh, simply because uh, it's, uh, the receiving path is more uh, inefficient. Receiving an interrupt is more, in, is more inefficient than, uh, than uh, actually writing in a register, which is what triggers the VM exit and so on. So there is no, no, no control implemented here. This is all future work. Well, as long as uh, as long as uh, SRIOV gives me what looks like an uh, hardware adapter, I can use NetMap on it. 
The point is if I have a native adapter of it or not. We have a generic adapter for any kind of NIC, but which is, uh, mm, of course, it's not as fast. It cannot achieve line rate. But for any hardware adapter, we can patch the driver to have a native adapter and see what we can do with that. The rest is independent for this. As long as we have a, uh, a netmap port adapter for a NIC, we can pass through the device. What? SRIO boot? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It depends on the, on the network card. So yeah, that, that was we mentioned here. Yeah. Okay, we mentioned it in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With a, a software switch like Vale, we you're just limited by the memory bandwidth. It's on the works because on uh, Beehive uh, we there is no E1000, so we are moving to Virtaio. Uh, it's uh, it's not very important because uh, again, the device uh, it's only used to uh, to s set the things up. Then during the in the data path, nothing nothing is used of the device, so it's rather. It just what is available, we can patch it to to support the pass through. Okay, as I said, this is only for netmap applications. Netmap applications running in the gas. If you want TCP, you have the the other options that uh, uh, already have. If you want to use netmap in the host, use a space TCP, for example, or uh, or nothing else. Is there a plan to uh, provide some type of netmap layer packet encapsulation type of thing? Uh, will be needed to, or will be basically something that will be PSO or eventually? So they are. Oh <laughs> okay, we should probably wrap up for the next uh, speaker. So. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they said me too. So. <laughs> we can talk. Yeah.